Sneaky Snake here, Brothers in Arms, World of Warships, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at our next installment in our Tactics and Strategy series, and this one is all about dealing damage. I'm playing in the Molotov, the Tier 6 Soviet Premium, I guess, medium cruiser, and I'm playing by myself, and it's some domination here on the map fault line. So it has been a while since we've dived into our Tactics and Strategy series, however, this is going to be a full 20 minute game and it should give me plenty of time to talk about, well, dealing damage. Now, this replay is going to have some pretty impressive results, at least in terms of damage and the overall impact that I'm able to have on the game, uh, but the result is not going to be one uh, which you might be accustomed to seeing. Uh, obviously, our channel, we try to provide pretty good gameplay, but I really felt that there was more that I could have done. I'm just not exactly sure what it should have been. And hopefully throughout the course of this replay, you guys will be able to maybe pick something out that I could have done better because, well, dealing damage in World of Warships is, in my opinion, the most fundamental thing that you need to do. You need to be able to deal damage to the enemy team without taking too much in return. And being able to do that, you're going to be able to get frags, and then it doesn't matter whether you're playing Domination, Epicenter, Standard Battle, what have you, you're going to be able to make it easier for your team to control the objectives because there are less enemy ships, or if there are enemy ships still around, they're not going to be on too many hit points, and you're going to have that advantage to work with. Now, obviously, you see it on all of the other YouTube channels that are related to World of Warships, big damage games this, big damage games that, 250k this, 300k that, but sometimes damage dealing, damage farming, uh, I guess for the proper term, can leave your team a little by the wayside. And what I mean by that is sometimes players get so consumed with dealing damage that it actually negatively affects their team. Now this is an unpopular opinion, but it is one that I believe is true, and I do think that there are some occasions in this game where I get a little bit too focused on trying to deal damage when I could have been making other plays that could potentially lead to my team's victory. Now unfortunately, this isn't a very good example ship for this replay. The Molotov is not very good at being aggressive. This ship is basically nine Dmitry Donskoy guns put onto a relatively sluggish and mediocre hull. You have excellent ballistics, alpha damage, fire chance, uh, shell velocity, you name it. This Molotov certainly has it with these big caliber guns. However, the ship is very mediocre in all the other aspects, especially uh, with the maneuverability and the hit points. Only 28,400, that's not a lot to work with, and the armor is pretty mediocre as well. So this ship is very good at the medium to long range second line support. You want to have other ships out in front of you taking damage or at least baiting enemy shots where you can rain down fire with pretty decent range at 15 and a half, but you can also use your scouting aircraft as well. This ship works very well at burning down battleships, especially if you have IFHE equipped, so you can easily reach the 32 millimeter threshold, which will basically pen, uh, at least at the mid-tiers, pretty much every single armor plating that you can find on battleships, with a very few and small exceptions. I believe the Piotr Veliki does have enough mid-deck armor to uh, shatter those shells, but anyway, uh, this thing is incredibly... Uh, capable of dealing damage and because you have the longest reload at 12 and a half seconds you need to make every shot count so you don't really want to try to be aggressive and engage many targets at once because this ship is not going to be very good at doing so so of course that is reflected in my opening positioning there's the congo and the ismail the genevni they're all out in front of me and i'm trying to utilize this island cover here to keep myself in between the enemy battleships that are coming and uh well, unfortunately, there is a Fushin that is dipping in and around the A-cap, so he has been periodically detecting me, uh, but at this location right here, I can still lob my shells over the island, and whenever the battleships do get detected, I can throw down some long-range support fire. Unfortunately, there's not too much spawning going on right now, so I haven't been able to get as much of an impact earlier on in the game that I'd like to. However, with Pablo and his Congo going around the corner, he will be getting those battleships spotted here pretty soon, and I will be able to open fire. Now looking at the minimap, you can see that my team has made a very heavy push over towards the sea cap. There is a uh, quite a gaggle of friendlies over there, including a few battleships. However, they are being encircled by a Galicinier from behind, and they're 
um, are also a couple enemy ships that are moving um, over here towards the A cap as well. So the enemy team is pretty much split evenly with that one lone Emil Bertin uh, just northwest of the B cap. The enemy team has been very aggressive early on in the game and it has already resulted in one of our uh, destroyers being killed. So things aren't looking too good right now and you can see that the enemy team is also being aggressive over here. Now of course with the IFHE and the high explosive like I said earlier, it's going to be very easy to damage these battleships. And since nobody is aiming at me right now, I don't have to worry about any return shots, and I can just focus on landing good, solid salvos into these battleships as they come our direction. The Molotov does have pretty good speed. It can go over 37 knots with the Sierra Mike flag. Uh, so you can see here that I am moving backwards and forwards, just trying to put my guns in range uh, to be able to shoot at whatever battleship is currently um, within it, of course, and I am backing up to try to get some shots on the Congo here. I've dealt about 10,000 points of damage, some relatively mediocre damage here, uh, with almost six minutes gone in the game, and unfortunately we've lost our second ship, as our team that's over at sea is really having some troubles right now. So, obviously the play kind of needs to be made over here at the A and the B caps. We do outnumber the enemy team over here, um, but things are not looking the best the Congo does take some pretty decent damage, and we do get, get two quick kills to even the scores back up a little bit. Uh, but the Fushun is doing a good job in the vicinity of the A-cap, keeping our friendly destroyers away. They've already managed to kill one of them, and the friendly Genevni is hurting a little bit too, as we do indeed lose Pablo. So now it's just myself and the Ishmael, but again, I need to stay at this standoffish distance, uh, because these enemy ships are going to easily be able to deal damage to me if I do get any closer. And besides, they have an Ishmael that they need to worry about. And it might seem a little cruel and callous that I'm this far back, but like I said, the Molotov is really a ship that you do not want to be up in the front lines with. That is not the play style. It's very similar uh, in some respects to the mid-tier Soviet cruisers, the non-premium versions like the Bidioni and the Shores, except of course you don't have the 152s. So I really feel like my positioning right now isn't terribly bad, as I need these battleships up in front of me to tank some damage. However, I am getting kind of screwed a little bit with the fire RNG. 40 shells have hit, and this is finally, after the 46th one hits, that I finally do get a fire on that Congo. And I'm backing up right now, trying to keep them within range, uh, but again, the play still needs to be made over here, and really what needs to happen is that Fushin needs to get taken out, but again, uh, it's not safe for me to go in there. The, uh, the Koenig over there has also, at about 13 kilometers away, moved uh, just onto the A-cap, kind of blocking off uh, the path for maybe uh, the Congo or the Ishmael on my team to try to advance upon. So, you know, while we do have some fires burning on the enemy Congo, we're not going to get some shots here on the Koenig, but we're losing 158 to 350. The enemy team is about ready to capture the sea point, and there's only two friendly ships over by the sea capture point uh, on our team that are capable of doing some stuff. The New York and the Genevni on my team are moving in towards the B cap, but things are looking very, very bad. And right now, I'm still focused on damage farming these battleships. The Congo gets burnt down to below 6,000 hit points before he finally uh, gets his repair ready to go. Hopefully, uh, my friend here will be able to finish that kill uh, on that guy. Some of the shells do hit. He gets put down to 590 HP. The fire finally stops ticking, but it does appear that the Ishmael should be able to get the kill, and that's exactly what happens. Unfortunately, as I continue to shoot at the Koenig, I'm not getting very good fire RNG because he did use his damage control on the one fire, but as we all know, people that use their damage control on one fire, it's like some magic potion. It just so happens that they do not get lit on fire on follow-up salvos. So, unfortunately... That's not going to work out. However, he has been pushed around the corner backing up, so now I'm going to switch my focus here uh, to the Iron Duke. Now, I did pop my hydroacoustic because I was a little bit worried about potential Fushin torpedoes coming my way. However, I'm still at full health. I'm still angled great. I'm stopped, so at a moment's notice, I can speed up if need be to try to dodge some salvos. But we got to kill these battleships over here really, really quickly because uh, our team is still at a disadvantage. We've lost five ships to the enemy teams as four. And while we do manage to get the B-cap under our control, you can still see that there's a lot more action going on on the other side of the map. And I think maybe this is one of the first times in the game that I feel like I really should have made my way over there because the match is more or less being decided over on the eastern half of the map. There's only four friendlies versus at least five enemy ships. Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, you can see that, you know, 
our team is struggling a little bit over there, but I've really stayed over here trying to farm these battleships quite a bit. Now, I have dealt a pretty considerable amount of damage. 64,800 is a pretty decent amount for the Molotov over the course of a game, uh, but I am being shot up by the Fushin, and of course, because these cruisers at these tiers don't really have much in the way of armor, I can't sit here and continue to get peppered by the enemy destroyer. So, I'm just trying to move out of effective range of his guns and still throw some shells downrange at the Iron Duke, but with less than 10 minutes left in the game, my positioning is all the way up at C1, about ready to go into B1. And it's finally now that I realize, okay, looking at the minimap, the friendly emerald is going to die. And those enemy ships that are over next to C are going to be moving towards the west. So I need to get back over there and relink up uh, with my team. But I'm just so far out of the battle that even with the great speed that the Molotov has, it's going to take me quite a few minutes to be able to make my way over there. So at this point, I realize, well, maybe I should continue shooting at this Iron Duke because he is being a little aggressive. I do have a fire burning on him right now, so obviously he is ticking some of his hit points. The Ishmael has also moved away from the battle space as well. Uh, I was also paying attention to that Koenig who maybe was going to throw some shells my way, and that's exactly what he did, but I was paying attention to it. Um, but right now, I'm being spotted by the Fushin, and I know that things are not looking the best. We have brought the kill count back. Each team has lost six ships apiece, but again, um, unfortunately, I just feel like that at this point in the game, I'm not really in the best position uh, to help my team out. I'm just really running away. I think I might have overstayed my welcome over here on the A side, and I'm comfortable enough admitting that because... You know, there's only so much that damage can do, and, you know, people can have those crazy high damage games, and don't get me wrong, I have some of the top average damage, or in the top 1% of average damage on a lot of ships, so I certainly manage uh, to get my fair share, or my quota, if you will, of damage dealt, but there are times when you do need to, I guess, play a little bit more team-oriented, and I just think that maybe at the start of the game I spent way too much time over here when I should have correctly read the minimap and made my way over towards the eastern side uh, quite a few minutes earlier before I actually did. Now I am going to be able to get a kill here on this Iron Duke. He's down to 3,000 hit points and he is burning. His heal finally ran out, so this next salvo is going to be able to finish him off. And I have farmed that guy for quite a bit that when the salvo does land, I do pick up the arsonist as I kill that tier 5 British battleship. I'm up to 91,000 points of damage and one frag, of course, uh, but we're still losing the game. It's 342 to 482, and there's only 7 minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. I do not know how much HP the Murmansk or the New Mexico has. You can see that the rest of my team is kind of still huddled down over there by the B-cap. And at this point, if our Genevni dies, this carry is going to be all but impossible. That guy needs to be able to stay alive. Our team needs to kill the Fushin down there. And then myself and the Ishmael up here, Britain, we need to go and kill these enemy ships that are starting to move towards the B-cap and create a crossfire uh, that our team is going to have trouble dealing with over there in the B-cap. Now, the Murmansk is going in a straight line. He did speed dodge here. I really felt like the salvo looked good in the air. Unfortunately, just a little short with the two forward guns, but I do manage to get one citadel on that guy. I was just a tad too far forward and a tad short. It is kind of difficult with the spotter plane to get really proficient with it. I feel that I am, um, but there are times where even at these medium range distances, it can be a little bit tricky. And of course, the Murmansk is making the right move. He is turning away, trying to run. Uh, unfortunately for him, he actually gets uh, butt citadeled by the Ishmael. So uh, we're back within 100 points here. But unfortunately, even though the enemy team only has three ships left, this New Mexico is on a lot of hit points. And you can see that New York is down to 86, so our friendly New York is going to die. And it's still going to take me a few minutes to get down towards the B-cap as the New York does kick the bucket. This New Mexico on the enemy team is going to be a huge problem right now because he has so many hit points. It's going to take a very long time for him to go down. And then unfortunately, as the Fushin comes into render range, he's on a lot of HP as well. Uh, so the enemy ships that are left on the board are going to be able uh, to uh, utilize some of their hit points if need be. And when I was playing the game, it was right about now that I realized, oh shit, there's less than six minutes left in this game. And even though the enemy team only has three ships, it's going to take a while to get these guys down, short of some miraculous god-tier salvo from one of our BBs. So... Um, I'm tentatively moving towards the New Mexico's position. You can see that his guns are pointed in the other direction um, towards my friendly Byron, I believe. 
Um, but I'm going to once again get a little too focused here on dealing damage. Now, of course, as the Genevani does kill the Kurnik, there's only two enemy ships left on the board, and this guy absolutely needs to die, because at this point, we're not going to have nearly enough time to try to go cap A and C. We need to get the kills here with uh, the two ships that are left on the board. So... Um, I got the high explosive shot loaded, but now we have some very important information. We know that the Fushin is on the B cap, of course, because he is flipping it, and our Genevani has virtually no HP, 67 left, so basically when he spots that guy, he's going to get spotted in return and he's going to die. But at this point, I should be moving directly towards the B cap. I'm trying to get all my turrets to bear, which I am, uh, but it's taking me a little bit more time than I would like. And even with the Ishmael in support, it's still going to take quite a bit of time uh, to be able to get onto the B cap. And unfortunately, our Genevni is firing right now on 67 HP. Uh, he is in smoke, but uh, definitely a very risky proposition. And unfortunately, the Fushin does detect him very quickly and he takes him down. So again, right now, this New Mexico is paying no attention to me. I really need to be moving full speed towards the B cap because that Fushin was pretty much beached against the island and it is going to take him some time to get himself reoriented. So I am now, with only four minutes and eight seconds left in the game, moving full speed towards the B cap. But unfortunately, the enemy team now owns all three capture points, and they are going to win here in the next couple of minutes based off of points alone. So unfortunately now, I need to rush in there. I am utilizing the great speed of the Molotov, uh, but it's going to be a flip of a coin, basically, if we're going to be able to get there in time. Now, you can see that I do get detected briefly, so what I'm imagining is happening right now is that he pulled out to see where I was, and then shortly I am going to go undetected. So that tells me that he did block line of sight. There we go, right there behind the island. And he's probably moving to the south or the southwest at full speed right now. Now the Fushin, I don't remember the detection range off the top of my head. It's a little bit over 6 kilometers, I think 6.3 or 6.4 um, so obviously, as I step onto the B cap, I think to myself, okay, he was on it contesting, but now, as I am detected, he is making the smart play, and he is running to the southwest. So, I just got to keep going full speed and kind of make the new play and drive in a straight line, because any little delicate rudder turn, and it is going to affect my speed to a great degree. So I need to run after this guy, and at this point it's just a guess. Did he go to the west? Did he go to the south? Did he go to the southwest? I need to make this guess right here. I am going to start turning back towards the west because I'm guessing, based off of the angle that those torpedoes came in on my friendly Byron, that his uh, ship is running away to the southwest or maybe even towards the A-cap, uh, but I actually do close the distance to the Fushin. And unfortunately he has 11,000 hit points, and of course on the first salvo he does get the fire that he needs. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the spotting aircraft, nor do I have hydroacoustic up uh, to be able to hook me up here at spotting some torpedoes. And this Fushin is actually going to play this pretty smart. He drops his smoke screen to get out of line of sight. I am still detected because even though he's behind the smoke screen, uh, my gun bloom is still providing the penalty for up to 20 seconds before I do go undetected. And at this point, I get lit on fire again because RNG hates you sometimes and then any second now some of these deep water torpedoes are going to come through and because again RNG hates me, well, it hits the tiny little hitbox on the side of the ship and I actually get my engine knocked out. So I'm on fire, I'm flooding, my engine got knocked out. You can see that my speed has gone down to below 20 knots at this point. And unfortunately, I still have another 11 seconds left until I get my repair back. So we only have a minute and 36 seconds left to kill this guy, but he's still on about 9,000 hit points. I popped my spotting aircraft, hopefully to get some vision on him as the plane kind of moves around to my bow. Um, but unfortunately, with 124 left, this guy is going to have to make a huge mistake for me uh, to be able uh, to get the kill on him. And unfortunately, all of that time that I spent north of the A cap where I was shooting at the ships, uh, the battleships specifically that were moving in, getting some really good damage, but not really getting the frags, only one in this game, and just, I feel like I spent a little bit too much time. And now I'm in desperation mode with one minute left in the game, trying to run after this guy. The Fushin does decide to open up on me for some reason, a very bold adventure by that dude. Don't know if he has debt flags running or not, but certainly it would be a shame if he did detonate. Four penetrating hits, I only get 2,000 damage, but I do set a fire. But unfortunately, this is where the crappy DPM of this ship does not come in handy, because it's very difficult uh, to be able to kill destroyers really quickly with this ship, unless you're hitting all of your shells on target at very close range. Uh, 
The rear turret, three hits, only 413 damage dealt. That was extremely peculiar. I'm not 100% sure how I didn't manage to do more, but the Fushun is just out of range, and then it hits 1,000 points, and that is the end of the game. Alrighty guys, taking a look now at the post-battle results, 356,000 credits received and 3.7k base XP, or not base, total XP. I picked up Arsonist and High Caliber dealing 132,000 points of damage off of 208 shell hits. I had 10 fires and 1 citadel. I only fragged 1 enemy ship, and while the damage numbers were extremely good for a ship of this reload, Unfortunately, it did not end in the victory. Taking a look at the team score, 1,127 base XP, so that was a really good amount. However, the Fushin on the enemy team was certainly having himself quite the game, and he ended up with a very, very good result. Now, the detailed report, 88k with the main battery, 43k with the fires that I set. I did travel 72 kilometers, however, you know... It just felt like I wasted a lot of time up by A, and it's very easy even for the really good players uh, to just kind of get focused a little too much on dealing damage because everybody wants the purple stats, everybody wants to have those high damage games, but sometimes you do get a little lost in that, and every now and then it will result in uh, you know maybe you not making the play that you should have made uh, because you were a little too focused on pumping up those damage numbers. Now, fortunately, like I said, for me... Um, I win and I deal a lot of damage, so this really isn't that big of a problem, but every now and then it happens, and this was a perfect example of a game where I really felt like I let my team down, and I have a lot of confidence, and I'm very comfortable saying that, because of course everybody has bad games, and even though the result might look a little great on the surface, I think after watching this replay back, it's very easy to tell uh, that I did not do everything that I could have done to help my team win. So, with that being said, hopefully you guys can maybe improve your gameplay by not focusing so much on damage and knowing when it's the right time to make a play. I really felt that this was the best example for it. Way too much time spent north of A, and it cost my team the victory. So, this is Sneaky Snake for BIA World of Warship signing off. Guys, if you liked the video, please give it a like and let me know what you think below, uh, whether you think that I could have done something better in this game. And with that being said, have a great day.